Welcome to the Eye of the Storm here at the Museum of Discovery and Science sponsored by the Florida Division of Emergency Management. I'm meteorologist Eric Salna with the International Hurricane Research Center at Florida International University. In this video, we're going to be learning from the National Weather Service here in Miami how they prepare our local weather information when it comes to a landfalling hurricane. And they share with us all the local hazard effects specific to South Florida. And that's what each and every National Weather Service office does to get you ready before, during, and after the storm. My name is Robert Moyeda, and I'm the Warning Coordination Meteorologist for the National Weather Service Miami South Florida Forecast Office. The National Weather Service makes and sends out all the forecasts, but most importantly, all the warnings uh, for the United States and its territories so that people can get that information and make plans, or really most importantly, in the case of warnings, take immediate action. So again, the National Weather Service and its meteorologists produce those forecasts and warnings for the protection of life and property. That is our primary mission. There are many different things involved in creating a weather forecast. First of all, we have to have a good idea of what's going on right now. So we have satellites up in space that take pictures of clouds so that we can see where the weather systems are, even if they're very, very far away. We also send weather balloons twice a day that give us a picture of the weather conditions, not just at the surface, but also way up above. We have a weather balloon network, if you will, or we call the upper air program. So the National Weather Service has about upwards of 80 or 90 sites across the country that send up weather balloons twice a day. But we fill them up with hydrogen or helium. We fill, we, we fill it up so it's big enough to be about four or five feet wide. And then attached to that balloon is a parachute. And then at the end of that rope is a instrument that we call a radiosonde. So what I'm holding here is a radiosonde. This is the package that actually takes the weather measurements. Uh, this part here is what takes the temperature measurements. This part here is called the hygrister. This takes humidity measurements. This is the part of the radiosonde that connects to the antenna. And then inside of the package here is a pressure cell that measures the pressure. And there's also a battery a battery that, that powers the little transmitter, like a little radio inside this box. So basically how this works is, as, this, as the balloon goes up with the box attached to it, the box, all the instruments that I just showed you are taking measurements live and sending those measurements to a computer we have here in the office. And then all that information goes into computer models. So these computer models basically take the current weather data and then make projections in the future of what, of what the weather is going to be like or whether, where these weather systems are going to be in the future. We take the official hurricane forecast from the National Hurricane Center. From there, we can come up with the different level of potential impacts from the different hazards of the wind, storm surge, rainfall, flooding, and tornadoes. So we evaluate each one relative to where the storm is and where the storm is expected to go. And then we do a local analysis of what the threats are from each of those hazards over basically any part of the area. And we have maps that show that those individual potential threats, which are posted on our website, weather.gov. So, you know, local officials are in contact with the National Weather Service. So, for example, when there's a storm threatening the area, uh, meteorologists from the National Weather Service don't just issue the forecasts and warnings, but we also coordinate and communicate very closely with local officials from cities, counties, state, federal, very a lot of different levels of government here in, 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 the, in the U.S. So it, we do that so that the local officials have all the information they need in order to make decisions that they have to make. First and foremost, evacuation decisions, closing schools, closing of roads and bridges and ports and airports. Those are all very important decisions that they have to make. So our information helps them make those decisions. So when you hear information from a local official saying uh, evacuation orders have been issued or schools have closed, understand that it comes based on information the Weather Service gives them. 
So everyone should always heed the advice and follow the advice of local officials. Thank you to the Miami National Weather Service for really helping us understand forecasting. There's so much that goes into really understanding kind of how to forecast weather. And one of the most critical things is understanding temperature, pressure, density. In today's brainstorm, we're gonna show you just how that works. I'm here in our Storm Center exhibit at the Museum of Discovery and Science, and we're gonna be talking about air pressure today. So I have a couple of experiments set up to demonstrate this, but first let's talk about what that really means, right? We hear a lot about air pressure and fronts and things like that, high pressure, low pressure systems when we're talking about weather and especially when we're talking about tropical systems like hurricanes or tropical depressions. Uh, air pressure is dictated by a number of forces. One of them, the main one we might be demonstrating here today, is temperature. Typically, when you have very hot air, it gets less dense, and so it exists at a lower pressure than cold air, which is a lot more dense, and especially if it's not moving and stagnant, it can be a very high pressure uh, atmosphere. And so when those two systems, when very hot air and very cold air merge together, especially coming from maybe different uh, areas of the globe where there might be other uh, climate factors like temperature, precipitation, uh, it could cause some very extreme results, like hurricanes and other powerful tropical storms. Uh, we get a lot of that happening here in the southeast of the United States, particularly in Florida where we're on a peninsula, where we get weather fronts coming from all directions sometimes. And sometimes there's very cold air, very hot air, and it could cause some very intense reactions like the powerful storms we get even on a daily basis here in South Florida. So what I have here is a tray of very cold water. And I also have two soda cans on this hot plate here. Now there's just a little bit of water co covering the bottom of the soda cans, just enough to create a little bit of moisture so that the hot plate can make the air inside the can very hot. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my tongs here and I'm going to flip this can over into the cold water. Now what's, what we're expecting to happen is when I do that, when the hot air in the can meets the extreme opposite temperature of the cold water, it's going to create a little bit of a vacuum so that the high pressure, high density, uh, cold air surrounding the can coming from here in the museum is going to collapse in on the can itself. So I'm gonna flip the can over now uh, in one fluid motion. We're gonna go from three, two, one. So you can see that the can is completely collapsed as if you had crushed it under your foot or something. But the can was crushed just with the power of the air pressure uh, of the difference created by the differences in temperature. From the cold uh, coming from the water and the heat coming from inside the can. When those two merged, it was a powerful enough force for the air around the can to crush it. I became a meteorologist uh, probably in a similar way as most of my colleagues uh, here in the National Weather Service. Uh, I had an interest in weather from an early age uh, when I was in grade school. I remember uh, growing up here in South Florida, uh, one of the things that really uh, interested me was hurricanes. And my parents, I remember, would track hurricanes uh, on one of those old paper maps. They would plot, uh, whenever a forecast would come out, they would take the coordinates of where the center of the storm was, they would put it on the map, and I would basically do it with them. Started doing it on my own, and I think that's where my interest grew. And uh, probably in high school, I decided, you know what, maybe I'll uh, try studying meteorology and becoming a meteorologist as my, as my career. And, Fortunately, things worked out and here I am as a meteorologist. In college, the classes that one would take uh, as a meteorology major, for example, would be a lot of physics and calculus are going to be an important part of, the, of, of your curriculum. Uh, computer classes too, computer programming is very important these days in meteorology and even GIS applications too. So we're seeing that more and more as well. 
our message going into hurricane season is really the same as it always is and it's it's, it's simple uh, it's be be ready so having a plan means knowing if you live in an evacuation area especially if storm surge is a big threat also means make sure that you have your supplies at least several days worth of supplies like food water batteries medicine uh, all those things that we're going to need in case you know we lose power after a storm and we're going to have to basically survive on those things for at least several days if not more so those are all elements of your hurricane plan which are part of being prepared so again being informed and being prepared are the two basic elements to getting ready and being ready during hurricane season for another Eye of the Storm here at the Museum of Discovery and Science. Today we learn about just how important it is that you stay up to date with your local forecasts and your watches and warnings provided by the National Weather Service Miami office. These presentations are brought to you by Florida International University's International Hurricane Research Center and the Florida Division of Emergency Management. Don't forget that all summer long, you can stay in touch with what we're doing to keep you prepared for hurricane season by following along on all of our social media and come in and try out some of these cool experiments yourself at the Museum of Discovery and Science.